think the law should be as it applies to South Ohio and the law of the door, but do you have any indication that there is illegal activity or has been illegal activity? I don't know. Um, you know, I, I, I don't think there's enough information that the public could even glean or anybody could glean um, to make a solid determination one way or another on this at this point. What I do know is that um, having been around town since 1986, this is like perhaps the one time I can recall so much trouble getting public records uh, in an easy, concise way. And it almost you almost have to be forensically writing public records requests to figure out exactly what you need to ask for to be able to get a reply. And different agencies are definitely interpreting in different ways. But I, I do think we need to really look at our ethics laws, um, especially when it comes to handling these types of investments um, and public-private uh, issues. Um, I think we also need to apply revolving door not just to our uh, current elected officials, but to appointed officials as well, trustees and former trustees. There's a lot of money going through these agencies. And I think that the best way is to have a revolving door that is solid for a certain number of years and a good, solid public records law that will allow the public to know what's happening with public dollars. And I, I do think. I'm not a legal expert on this, but I do think that the Attorney General or someone needs to look into um, some of the ways in which public records are applied um, with people on contract status, allowing them to either review documents, we're not sure exactly who um, did the Ohio State piece, whether the attorney for Drive Capital had any input. We have an actual record request that is outstanding to Ohio State where we are actually trying to find out like, who did the redaction piece, and was it Ohio State's attorney that did that, or was there a conversation between the attorneys? I don't know if I can get an answer on that either. Um, but one of the things that I noted in the packet that you all got and that we got on Drive Capital was a notation that if you didn't ask specifically about something, they redacted. So you actually, as a reporter, or you as a member of the public, have to know exactly what you're requesting. And it's a fishing expedition to just figure out, under those circumstances, what to get, if they can redact anything you didn't specifically ask for. I wanted to clarify what you're saying about public records law, either as it's currently written and, and should be enforced, or how you think it should be written, because the law would appear to generally apply to, to OSU, and I don't know if you see what they're talking about. On the other hand, the Supreme Court just said it does not, this reaffirmed with the case of Ms. Holman, uh -huh. with Ms. Holman, yeah, that it does not apply to Jobs Ohio. So I'm, I'm trying to understand what the both Well, Jobs Ohio was a specific, um, as my, I understand it, it is specific legislation exempting Jobs Ohio from public records. In this instance, with Drive Capital, the question should be, why can one agency release a document that another state agency cannot? And it shouldn't be this hard to get those documents. Um, more important to me is the fact that we have somebody who'd never been in Ohio or hadn't spent much time in Ohio, did not have a whole lot of contacts, came in for a dollar a year, um, made many contacts through Jobs Ohio with the business community and other wealthy folks in Ohio, and turned around, re resigned, and three years later is able to get a contract, which we know was a sweetheart contract, where he went to dinner with the president, the former president of OSU. He used all of those connections to try to secure the $50 million for drug capital. And this document for, for OPERS appears, if you apply the same terms to Ohio State, to have yielded $9 million over 10 years, plus a potential 20% of the profits after the investors are paid. That's a pretty big return for anybody. It's a pretty big return for anybody anywhere in the country. I, I don't. I, I think. Um, I think he definitely um, uh, cashed in on the relationships that he was able to develop in Ohio better than most Ohioans could. Do you think that uh, you're saying then that, that uh, Mark Kwame came to Ohio uh, with the intention of to start up Jobs Ohio in order to go off on his own and start this fund and cash in on these relationships. I, I, I couldn't tell you for sure. All I know is that the way that the revolving door works and the way that this 
has evolved. He has certainly cashed into the tune of nine million dollars. It appears we don't know the terms of OSU if it's any different, but it appears that those relationships definitely paid off for Mark Kwame and his partner Chris Olson. So I, I don't know the answer to that, and I don't know that we'll ever know the full answer to that. Uh, that's part of the problem with both the public records issue and the revolving door issue. Is there anything in the uh, documents indicating how much they wanted uh, voters to invest? I don't believe so. No. There, there was nothing in there about the actual amount that they wanted invested at the time. Was that the only other agency that did respond here? That was the only one that responded there. We're still going through all of the different records, and then we're still making record requests, not only in-state but out-of-state, to other folks that Drive Capital may, might have gone to. Uh, but uh, you know, we shouldn't have to do this to begin with. Um, had all of these records been released to you and, the, and other journalists when it was asked for, you should have been able to get the information, write about it, the public would have that right to know. But at this point, the redactions from Ohio State University were pretty extreme. Any other questions? Have you had a discussion with the Attorney General about this issue? I haven't. I intend to write a letter. Um, at, we're waiting for our response. Uh, once again, to find out from OSU uh, how they're interpreted, how they're interpreting it, or if there was any correspondence between Drive Capital's attorneys and uh, Ohio State attorneys specifically related to release of public records, and um, then I was thinking that I would probably write a letter to the Attorney General. I do know that one of the other pension funds, like I said, said that. The document was transferred electronically, and they had to sign a disclosure agreement over the electronic transfer, so therefore they could not disclose the document to us. Um, and it leads to questions over how many games you can play um, when you're in a contract with the state to avoid public records process, and whether a state agency can waive public records um, through these legal games. Do you, believe, do you believe the uh, lines of communication with OSU on this matter are closed now, or do you think if you keep pressing, if you keep being more specific, they're more willing to kind of open the door on this, or do you think the negotiations and discussion are it's done with this? This is really uh, the most, uh, the first time that I've experienced, I mean, we've all experienced either as journalists or advocates pushback on public records requests at times, but this is the first time I've seen something to this extent where you have to literally know exactly what you're looking for, like a needle in the haystack for them to give you a document, and even then you don't know if they'll say no. Um, I think Ohio State should release the document. Um, if the numbers are different, they should tell the public, because we already have a document that was released by a different agency. Um, I, I don't know the answer to that, and I don't know that the public will know the answer unless OSU releases the terms that they agreed to. Uh, but I, I would, I'm not an investor, but I, I would think that it would be unusual for a major investor like Ohio State to have different terms than other investors when it came to how uh, the management fee was paid. But until, we, until Ohio State really releases the documents, there's no way to know other than to keep making other record requests and keep trying to find out. Any other questions? Not, I just want to reiterate one more time that this came from OPERS and that I cannot specifically say that these terms apply to Ohio State, but <coughs> by applying the OPERS terms to Ohio State, they appear to show the $9 million.